Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new series. So in this one, every single week, I'm going to be reviewing subscribers, Shopify stores. So the reason why I want to do this series is to help people improve their stores and ultimately see a bit more success. When it comes to designing and putting together a Shopify store, web design, product descriptions, and branding ultimately, then if you have zero experience, then it's probably fair to say that the first time you do it, it's probably not gonna go down too well. And if you wanna be successful in this business, then you have to do it well. It's one of those imperative and crucial parts to your business. Think of your Shopify store, your landing page, your product page as like your first impression with any potential customer. Obviously the first point of contact is them seeing the ad that you're running. And if your ad does a good job and entices the potential customer into clicking your ad and going to your website, that is then your first impression with that person. Give off a good impression and they're gonna stay on your store, consume more information about the product and potentially buy it. However, give off a bad impression and they're going to leave and probably try and buy the product somewhere else. Think of it as like anything else. If you're in the market for a new car and you go to a car showroom and the salesman comes over and he's just not a very nice person or he doesn't give off a very good vibe, chances are you're not gonna buy a car off him. If you're at a party and somebody comes over and introduces themselves and again they have traits about their personality whatever it may be but ultimately you just they're not your kind of person you're probably not going to end up making friends with them and you're probably going to look for any excuse to get out of that conversation and move on your Shopify store is no different when somebody comes onto your store you need to have a clear identity that is in line with the type of person that you're targeting so this week I'm reviewing a generalized Shopify store dropship shipping store so a general store is a store that sells products from lots of different niches so it's not just one particular one it can sell products from the home niche products from the dog niche from the gadget niche bathroom niche whatever it may be the store in question is called minimall.com and this is the home page this is their home screen so initial impressions it looks like a really kind of minimalistic professional luxurious um, kind of store they're using like a thin capitalized font which again gives off that sense of kind of like authority and identity i would expect these guys to be selling quite unique and expensive one-off products their logo looks nice um, it's got a bit of an orange tint too which is okay i'm all right with that however the fonts they're using looks very similar to the fonts they've got in their menu items at the top so all in all it's given off quite a nice feel at the moment I'm not a big fan of the use of the emoji um, in this sense here. I think it's a bit out of context or a bit out of character for this store given the kind of home image that they've used. I also don't like it when stores use things like this hot sale. When you use hot sale or daily picks or discounts or big bargains or that sort of thing, instantly it devalues your brand. So if this store was mine, these would be the first two things that I would change. So initial impressions, apart from those couple of things are very good, I expect it to be selling quite expensive um, and well put together quality products. And when we scroll down, this is what we have. So you probably didn't see this coming. I didn't when I first took a look at this store because this section here is so messy, it's so bold, it's so in your face, it's giving off a completely different impression to the initial hero image here at the top. You're going to hear me talk about identity a lot um, in this series, in these videos, because it's super important. When somebody comes onto your store, subconsciously they want to know who you are and what you're about, and by having a consistent and kind of uniform branding throughout the store, people will instantly either feel more comfortable comfortable or feel like they smell something a bit fishy and something's up, something's not quite right here um, and ultimately end up leaving. So whilst I'm not a big fan of this section, your homepage, ultimately speaking, isn't gonna be the difference between success and failure because if you're running direct targeting ads, you're gonna be sending people straight to a product page. So let's do that in fact, let's choose a random product. So let's go for this extension force it here um, and this is going to be the page this is going to be the first impression that a potential customer gets when they come to this store so um, i want to try and make this series as interactive as possible when it comes to store design then it is quite subjective i'm just giving my opinion based on my own experiences the most important factor to any product page is whether it converts or not. It doesn't matter whether I think it looks good or bad. It doesn't matter whether you think it looks good or bad. If it converts 
and is profitable, then that's all that matters. So that being said, I'd love to get your guys' input. Let me know in the comment section what you think to this store once you've watched the video. Um, give it a rating out of 10. Let me know what you think. Maybe I'll give you my rating at the end if you stay tuned until then. So first things first is there's quite a lot of information going on on this page. There's lots of different fonts, lots of different colors when you take into account the imagery they've used. These look like stock images taken from AliExpress, which is not a good idea to do in my mind. If they were really serious about making this business work, making this product work, and it wasn't just a case of trying to pump and dump it and make as much money as possible as quickly as possible, then what I would actually do is redesign all of these, um, import them into Canva, get rid of this text, and then put your own text in there that matches the fonts and the feel and the color schemes that you've got on your website. So because I've used quite a kind of minimalistic, modernistic, professional look initially, I'd probably stick to that. I'd probably just have the product in a blank background, just stick to that so it's in keeping with the rest of the store. The next thing they do is when you flick between these two um, what's the word? Variants. When you flick between these two variants, number one, some of the words are capitalized, some aren't. I think it's really important that you either do one or the other. Um, so you've got a new 1080 plus 360 rotating spout single mode effluent, and then you've got a swivel nozzle dual mode effluent. Um, to be honest, I don't know what the difference is between these. So you're expecting a customer to read through and find what the difference is. And already on board, I can't be bothered to spend my life finding out what the difference is. I'm just going to leave. I'm not going to bother making a purchase. It's not worth it. So just make sure if you're selling a product with numerous variants, like it's super crystal clear what the difference is. So customers can make a purchase choice um, as quickly as possible. The last thing you want to do is leave unanswered questions in your visitor's mind because people are too lazy. It sounds horrible, but too, people are too lazy to read and and go through all of this information and find out every tiny little bit of info about this product. They're too lazy to do it. Plus, they're too lazy to send you a question or ring you up and find out as well for then you to have to return that question, reply to that question, for them to then come back onto the Shopify store and buy the product. It's just not gonna happen. Your best chance of being successful is converting people the very first time they come to your Shopify store. Two other things they have in this store which are additional, which I assume they're paying for apps for is this one here. Um, as you can see, it keeps changing between 65, 67, 70 visitors are browsing our store. These would be things that I would split test one at a time. So run your store for two weeks, running ads um, with absolutely nothing on, just the basic information, take a note of what your conversion rate is, install one of these apps, then do it for another two weeks. Has your conversion rate increased or has it decreased? If it's increased, keep it, decreased, remove it, and you split test different third-party apps um, like that. Moving down then into the product descriptions, we have these trust badges showing all the different payment options. To be honest, I don't have these on my stores anymore because the household or popular payment methods, everybody is already aware of them. Everybody expects to be able to use them. So unless you've got some weird and wonderful payment method that people would be happy to see, but not expecting to see. So for example, you're gonna let people pay um, in cryptocurrency then, I don't think there's any need to have these on there. I like the fact they've got the dynamic checkout button to illustrate they have PayPal, so it's a safe purchase because you can claim your money back. So I think having these extra trust badges here, um, in my opinion, is just a bit overkill. Moving down then into the product description a bit further, um, this section here looks super amateurish. Um, I'm gonna say it as harsh as it may sound. I can't see product descriptions like this working very well at all. This needs to be properly formatted. You need to spend the time making sure all the fonts are the same. There's two or three different fonts there. There's God knows how many different colors. They've not got a space between emojis. It's just too mess, um, messy. It's too confusing on the mind. It's not very visually pleasing and it's not very easy to digest the information as well. It goes back to that whole thing of consumers being lazy or maybe it's not so much people are lazy for sure but it's also that when somebody's on their phone they're unlike the number one thing that's going to distract them so for every second longer they have to spend on your website digesting information that's one extra second they have to be distracted by a text by a phone call by a whatsapp by a facebook notification by a tiktok video whatever it may be so you need your information super quick super easy to digest so customers can make that decision there and then in a split second that they want to buy the product as we move down then, 
um, they do like a decent job there's no need to have this yellow font in there in my opinion they've kind of branded it with the logo as you can see I think that's the same yellow but I think it's a bit overkill just having the key things in bold is more than enough they have some main features they're repeating the images which we saw on the left hand side rich in oxygen soft and does not splash fine water output suitable for cleaning toothbrushes water cups etc so lots and lots of information um, and it's more of like a it's more of like an instruction manual that's what i was going to say this description is more of an instruction manual more than instead of like a um a designed funnel to help convince somebody to make a purchase so it's pointing out all the different features of the product but it's not actually talking about the benefits of it and why somebody would actually buy it you have to sell what the product can do for someone not sell what the actual product does if that makes sense moving down then towards the end of the product description we have an after sale service with this random um, more trust badges in the orange it's quite pixelated I don't know if you'll see that in the video but it's just not a very professional they've not even removed the background from it either I don't know if you can see that but there's like a, a white background to this image whereas the website has a great background um, and then on top of that there's no actual reviews for this product either so so I think this product page needs a lot of work if it's going to work um, at all and those things that I've mentioned in this video would just be the start to be honest so when I work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis I would record a video like this which can sometimes be 20 minutes long going through all the things that I would change um, and then once they've made those changes they come back to me and say I've made those changes can you review it again and there's nothing wrong in that whatsoever sometimes it does take two three sometimes even four or five times to get a product page right but the most important thing is that you realize that something is wrong and something does need to change um, and you seek the advice of somebody with experience to do that and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this series to help people get that advice and um, without having to pay for it something else I didn't see on the product page whether I missed it or not um, just because of how busy it was is when am I going to expect to receive this product so I'm just going to hit A to C taxes and shipping fee will be calculated at checkout see I don't like to see that the, the mention of taxes I mean I'm based in the UK so that's probably why when you buy something here in the UK online you don't expect um, anything you don't expect to pay any taxes because it's included in the actual price I know that's different when you're shopping in the US so there's no mention of when um, to expect to receive the products so I have to go on to the FAQ now I know you might think I'm having a dig and being fussy but all this extra time those two or three seconds or in this case probably an extra 10 20 seconds of somebody having to find out when they'll expect it so how secure exchange rates shipping address can I change how long does shipping take the delivery time is based on the shipping option you've chosen once the order is shipped we will email your tracking number and tracking website not responsible for delays so that still doesn't answer my question unless we've missed it once more at this point I don't know exactly what I'm going to receive I don't know when I'm going to receive it so I think it's pretty safe to say that the majority of people coming onto this store wouldn't trust it and therefore are not going to convert and so with that being said I'm going to wrap the video up there um, I feel like I pointed out enough on this store to at least get it going in the right direction now I just want to reiterate I don't mean to come across as harsh um, it, the way that I look at it at it is it wouldn't be right for me not to be harsh or not to say those things because this person would just end up spending more money on ads driving traffic to their store ultimately to see zero results so ultimately could end up them spending and wasting more money um, on ads when in reality this is where their attention and focus needs to be so that being said I hope you guys enjoyed the video I hope there's some value um, and usefulness from this video that you take away um, if you want to get your store reviewed make sure you follow me on Instagram head over there now click follow once a week I put out a story so look out for that you can send me your link and I'll feature it in a video like this thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one on Wednesday cheers